All right, so this is being recorded and we're gonna today cook uh, two dishes and a salad. And I'm gonna show you something in terms of what Indians use for matzah during Passover. So in terms of <coughs> ingredients, uh, for the rice we have, I've already prepped an onion that's chopped. All of the dried fruits are here in a cup. All of the whole spices are here. In other words, the cinnamon, the peppercorn, the cloves, the turmeric, the bay leaf, etc. Mm -hmm. But I have added an additional spice, which I didn't want you to buy, and that is not essential, and that's mace. Now, mace is something that's used by folks that actually bake a lot. So uh, in a lot of desserts, you will find that mace is used. Uh, I use it whole in rice. Uh, I also have turmeric powder. Um, here's my basmati rice, right, in a uh, strainer. Remember, no matter how much rice you use, it's one measure of rice to two measures of water. Unless you soak the rice in advance, and then you should not use as much water. Uh, I also have some nuts, totally optional. Uh, I've roasted them. Uh, for your recipe, it asked for cashews. So I would roast the cashews. I would kind of crunch them so they're not too small, right? Just chunky pieces and keep them to garnish with the end. Do not put the cashews in the recipe. Um, and you can use salt to taste. Now an alternative is if you want to use a vegetable broth Instead of just water, you may, if you want to use uh, chicken broth instead of water, you may do that as well. Uh, but that's totally optional. In addition, look in your freezer. If you have any frozen vegetables, peas, peas and carrots, corn, string beans, whatever, you may throw that in. Again, totally optional. This type of a rice is something that can be actually a whole meal in itself. If you throw some chicken in, it would be a whole meal. You don't need to make anything else. Uh, or you can use it as a side dish of rice. All right, so that's the rice. And we are going to get started with that first because it's going to take an hour. So turn your oven on right now to 350 degrees. I'll give you a minute to do that. Everyone good to go? Think so. Okay. Now let's go over the ingredients for the salmon as well. So for the salmon, we have again onions, chopped ginger, chopped garlic, chopped green chilies, chopped. Now remember, if you uh, are using green chilies, you can adjust the numbers of chilies that you use. So you can use fewer or more depending on how spicy you want it. Uh, this is the coconut milk that I'm gonna use, okay? I have my garam masala. Excuse me, Judith. Are yeah. you using full fat or light coconut milk? I never use anything light. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think it's better to use less of something than something light because the light is a fallacy in my opinion. Right. Okay. Um, if you have cumin in the salmon, it is not required, totally optional. You can use some fresh ground cumin. Mm. Uh, I've already de-skinned the salmon and I have it in pieces. Now, if I were cooking for my family alone, but today I have Abraham and Sharon and Shelly, <laughs> uh, I would not skin the salmon. Uh, I think most uh, Americans, I've noticed if I uh, give them the skin, they leave it on the plate. So I took the skin mm -hmm. off. Now, if you use the skin in salmon, a good thing to do is lightly fry the skin before you slip the salmon into the curry, okay? Um, all right, for garnish, I have chopped coriander and I have lemon juice. Mm. All right, 
As your oven is heating, oh, hang on for a second. Abraham has a question. Yes. Uh, I noticed that the ginger is quite coarse, and right. chopped, as opposed to to grated. Right. I'm surprised to see that because that would give you a really good bite for me. Excellent question. So Abraham asked me a question. The ginger I have here is coarsely chopped. Now there are two ways of doing this. So I coarsely chop for the curry, everything, only because what you'll see is after I cook it, I am going to grind it. Ah. Now, if you don't want to grind it and save yourself time, or if you don't have a grinder, you don't have a processor, then you need to very finely chop it. Okay. Okay. Super question. All right. Now, one more thing since we are approaching Passover. Uh, I also made what Indians would use for matzah. So this is what we use for matzah, and I made this in advance. Um, I'm going to heat it up before I serve it, but um, it's a little laborious to do, so I didn't want to do it today as a group, but anytime we can do it. Uh, it's taking flour immediately, uh, kneading the flour, and it's nothing else but water and flour, and then um, rolling it out in round circles or as round as one can get it, right? And then uh, cooking it on a flame. Okay, so I have that. In addition today, uh, and I, I told you this, you could make a vegetable from the cookbook. So I have already made um, for Shelly and Abraham and Sharon, uh, long beans. Now, long beans are very different than string beans. They are literally about this long. And this is the long beans. Um, I've also made a lamb dish with lentils. Whoa. So, so let's start. Let's start with the rice. Hopefully our oven is pretty close to 350 degrees. Um, so we're gonna transition to the kitchen and start with the rice. Okay, so does everyone have everything prepped? If not, please tell Abraham that you're not ready. Okay, so I have a, I have a pot that can go in the oven with the rice. Set your, um, your, your stove, whether it be electric or gas, to medium high, and put in about two to three tablespoons of oil into the pot. As soon as that heats up, I'm going to add my onions. Now these onions were finely chopped and that's only because I'm not gonna grind them later. I'm a little low on the oil there, so I'm gonna add a little more oil. I try to keep it as low as possible. By the way, these are great oil bottles. Mm. And I think I have some peas and carrots in the freezer, so I'm gonna get those in the meantime. So remember, if you have any frozen vegetables in the freezer, peas, peas and carrots, corn, string beans, feel free to add them. Uh, another thing is edamame. If you have edamame in the freezer, you can add that as well. Now, Western cooking requires that onions be translucent. Eastern cooking requires that onions be caramelized. So that's the difference between Eastern cooking and Western cooking. So if you're making a sole with a lemon sauce, you don't want to brown the onions, you want them just caramelized. If you're making a curry or you're making stir fry, 
you want some caramelization at the end. I'm going to take a peek as to how everyone is doing. What type of oil do you use? So I use canola oil. Okay. Yeah, because the um, temperature at which it burns is much higher. If I used an olive oil, I would not be able to caramelize the, the oil would get a bit burnt. Yeah. So my stove is now at, um, at high to be able to uh, caramelize the onions. Also, just to show you what caramelized onions look like for the lamb curry that I'm going to serve to get it today, I already roasted the onions. And they're not burnt, but they are caramelized. Delicious. You can literally eat spoonfuls of this stuff. My cameraman is getting tired of standing. <laughs> All right, so I'm almost getting there. The, the uh, onions are beginning to caramelize. So what I'm going to do is add the um, all the uh, spices, the cinnamon, the clove, the peppercorns, everything, bay leaf, the whole deal. And then I'm going to continue to saute a few more minutes. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add are all the dried fruit. Now remember, you can add water to cook the rice, or you could add chicken broth, or you could add vegetable broth. If you decide to add vegetable broth or chicken broth, you should start getting it ready now, depending on whether you're gonna use bouillon cubes or homemade prepared chicken broth or vegetable broth. If you're using a bouillon cube, you need to start heating the water and dissolving the bouillon cube, right? Alternatively, water is just good enough. Okay, rice. So I'm using basmati rice. Any rice imported from a foreign country comes with pesticides. Mm. Okay, there is no such thing as organic. I, another thing I don't. So whenever you use an imported rice, and most of our rice is imported unless you're using California rice, it's really important to wash it well. And just pouring water over it, I don't think it's important is enough. You need to really rinse the rice well. So that's what I'm going to do now in cold water. You want to come closer?
and put it through in the pan. So I literally scrub the rice with my hand and then I drain it. Okie doke, we're ready to add the rice. Now, the rice has water in it, and the goal is to get rid of the water. So I'm going to just kind of stir it while all that water evaporates. But you have to make sure that the rice doesn't stick to the bottom of the dish mm. of the pot. I'm going to add my turmeric. Probably the only herb that has been proven scientifically to uh, be anti-inflammatory. Now, if you're using only water, no broth that's salted or anything, you may add some salt now. I'm going to use my vegetables that I have, just plain old frozen peas and carrots, about half a cup. Now, this was the exact measure I used to measure the rice. So I'm going to use two of these exact measures uh, in terms of liquid. And so here's my first measure. And here's my second measure. Make sure all your ingredients are below the water level. Turn off your stove. Cover it and it goes into the oven. for 50 minutes for perfect rice. Alexa, set timer for 50 minutes. 50 minutes, starting now. And your rice will be done in 50 minutes. Oh, uh, so Indians don't, write, don't like sticky rice, right? We don't eat sticky rice unless it's a dessert. So, um, this rice will be really light and fluffy and not sticky. All right, so where are we everybody? Should we start with the salmon or do you need a little more time to complete the rice? All right, can you give us a thumbs up if you're ready to move on? All right, excellent. 
Excellent. So I will move all my ingredients for the salmon closer. So um, if you have a food processor or something in which you can grind the onions, ginger, and garlic, you should also get that ready. Judith, how long? Yeah. And actually in about 15 minutes, I have to remember to put the lamb and the vegetables in the oven. All right, so I'm going to cook the salmon in a pot that is um, not very high, but iron and cast iron, right? This is a Le Creuset. And put a little canola oil in there and turn it up on high and let it heat up. How many ounces in the place that you have? Oh, I don't know. I buy the salmon. So I buy the salmon from a place called Hesh, H-E-S-H. -E they, they supply to restaurants. So you don't buy pieces, you buy an entire salmon. And so I buy sides and then I cut them into pieces that we serve. Um, and you can do that however big you want. And then of course I buy two salmons about this size and my sons come and collect them as well. <laughs> Are you but, using canola oil also for the salmon? Yeah, canola oil or any vegetable oil would work just fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is once the oil is hot, we're going to put in the onions, brown them, the ginger, the garlic, the chilies, and then those things will go in the food. Yeah, if you if you don't have a food processor, that's why in the recipe, what I did was finely chopped and then you don't need to put it in a food processor. Okay, so it seems to be um, doing pretty well here. So what I'm gonna do is start to add my onions. Yep, it was hot sizzling. So for me, everything's coarsely chopped only because I can't find my old food process. So I'm going to use this little thick of jiggy that I have. So salmon cooks for a very short time, maybe 10 minutes max, okay? So um, you can make the entire curry and just slip in the salmon 10 minutes before you serve it. Or you can slip it in, cook it for 10 minutes, turn it off, and then, you know, just serve it at room temp, whichever way you want. But overcooked salmon is awful. Okay, so these are almost half sauteed, they're beginning to brown. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the ginger. I'm going to add the garlic. And I'm going to add the chilies and I'm going to continue to cook them. I try to do this in as little oil as possible, but you can't go too low because then it won't brown. So the flavor of your curry will be very different. Um, so the chilies that I use kind of look like this. So, um, our grocery store has it, but I go to an Indian store and in Ben Salem, what the Indian that? stores have the best vegetables because they come from the farms in New Jersey. Much better than most grocery stores have. Yeah. 
And uh, ginger and chilies are best kept in the freezer. So you notice I have my chilies in the freezer. They're like fresh when I use them. Same thing with ginger. Yeah, so just put, I wash them, I dry them really well and stick them in the freezer. Okay, my uh, stuff is pretty caramelized, so I'm going to turn off the stove. And now I'm going to work to get it all into that grinder. So in this kind of a curry, when you're using coconut milk, know that coconut milk is sweet and you can err more on the side of spicy stuff because it, the coconut milk is going to cut that heat. Um, so I don't worry so much when I'm using coconut milk because I actually try to use a little more spicy stuff because I know it's going to get blunted. Okay. So my i've all i've done is roasted the the onions ginger garlic and green chilies and now i'm going to grind it got it now i'm going to put like a few tablespoons of water in it because it's going to be too thick to grind otherwise actually i'm going to put uh less than a quarter cup maybe one ounce of water to be exact <coughs> Okay, it's still too thick, so I'm going to put another ounce. Okay, I just finished grinding it and it literally is a paste. There are a few little pieces around, but not very much. I'm gonna turn my stove back onto medium. And since it's been about 15 minutes, I'm gonna add my lamb curry to the oven and my vegetables so they heat up. Okay, I should not, it should not require any more oil. I'm not gonna.
Okay, so you see there's no liquid in here. It's really, it's when you stir, it doesn't, it comes off the pot, right? This is the trick to Indian cooking. There should be no liquid and the, this should come off the pot. See, when I move it, it's just the pot is clear, the bottom of the pot. If you have an old cast iron, I use cast iron thing. Oh, yeah, same way. Yeah, so if you see what I use a lot of, oh, that's yeah, exactly. A lot yeah. of cast iron pots. I use a lot of cast iron. And some people find it very difficult to maintain, but I have no trouble maintaining cast iron. It's pretty easy. The problem is, those things are really heavy. Right. Mine is my grandmother's, and it's so easy. Yeah. Now, with this having no liquid in it, you got to be really careful because it's going to burn fast. So I'm going to lower my stove, and I'm going to start adding my spices. So I'm going to add my garam masala, right? One and a half teaspoon is what I recommend for you. I'm going to add a little more. I'm going to use a little cumin. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. My mother's recipe, there was no cumin. And I'm going to add a little turmeric. And I'm going to add a little salt. Salt to taste, whatever you decide you like. So I don't, I'm really low on salt. I don't use use my salt. So all my spices are now in. Notice there's no liquid in here. So now I'm going to add the coconut milk. I'm going to put in about a cup of coconut milk. Now, I don't know how much salmon each of you is making, uh, but you don't want this to be too watery. So you can come back and take a look to see how much liquid I have in here. I am going to add, if you are different coconut milk um, uh, companies have different levels of richness and thickness to their coconut milk. So if it is really rich and really thick, you want to add a little water. So you see, I have my coconut milk in here and it's rather thick. So I'm going to add a little water. Okay. So you don't want too much water. You don't want too little water. You need enough for that salmon to cook. Before I pop the salmon in, Michael will come back and show you the thickness of this. Now we will not be together when you're serving this. So remember your chopped coriander and your lemon juice are the garnish that go on just before you serve it. Okay, so Michael's gonna come back close and show you the thickness of this, the gravy that I have so far. So it's not super thin, but it's not super thick, okay? Sharon, was it clear on the, yeah, all right, good color. So what I'm going to do now is let it come to a very slow boil and I'm going to clean while I do that and then I'm going to slip the salmon in. Um, if you want it to come to a boil a little faster, maybe add the cover to the pot to boil faster. All right, let's see if this thing has come to a boil yet. 
Uh, yes, it has. All right. So you can see it very slowly boiling. It's still a little thick. I have a feeling it's trying to stick to the bottom. So I'm just going to add a little water so I don't run into any trouble with the fish burning. Let it again come to a boil. Give it just two minutes and we should be uh, good to go. Uh, one more thing. We said we would serve a salad with this. So what I have done and what you can do if you plan on doing this, you want something to kind of, especially if you have a lot of spicy food, something to cut the spice. So here I have tomatoes, cucumber, and sliced red onion. Uh, and I have put some salt on it, kosher salt, a little bit of lemon juice, and um, some olive oil, just a very tablespoon or less. Okay, actually, if you don't do the uh, olive oil is fine as well. Uh, you could turn this into what we would call a raita. So you could add yogurt to this because it is fish, so you don't have a meat and dairy problem here. But I'm just going to leave it as is and just leave this as a salad. A perfect dessert for an Indian meal is, of course, Indian fruit. So this is papaya with very large red grapes, so purple grapes. If I had mango, I'd have used mango instead. Okay, so let's see how we are doing here. Um, my guess is we're ready to go. Ah, uh, yeah, and a little too vigorous in the boiling. So I'm gonna lower that. And Michael can come closer and show you what this looks like now. So you can see it's boiling. And I am now going to slip the fish in. Okay, so you want to cover every piece with the sauce. So I'm gonna do that. Yeah, me too. Okay, so now I'm going to cover it and I'm going to cook it for 10 minutes. No more and turn it off. Uh, I'm going to do it on medium low. Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. Second timer, 10 minutes, starting now. So just as a reminder, after your rice is finished, I have, you'll have cashews. I have some nuts that I have roasted and kind of pounded a little bit that I'm going to toss on top. After your salmon is done, you're going to garnish it with fresh fruit, squeezed lemon juice. I'm going to use a whole half a lemon and coriander chopped. Okay. And then uh, bon appetit.